Many times students come to me asking, Sir, what is the difference between bioinformatics and computational biology? Are they the same or just uh, interchangeable names or is there any real difference? So in today's video, we will talk about definition of bioinformatics and uh, computational biology. But we will also dive deep into what is the difference, what are the similarities and uh, can we really call bioinformatics as computational biology or computational biology as bioinformatics. So we will try to clear the air. But when I was researching on this topic, I found out that many colleges and academics uh, use this term interchangeably without understanding the uh, impact of it. So let's start with the definition, which obviously uh, we can say uh, Bioinformatics would be interdisciplinary field that combines biology, computer science and statistics to analyze uh, biological data such as uh, DNA sequences and protein structures. So that's uh, what we can say as bioinformatics. But now if I have to say computational biology, what, how, how do you define computational biology? So you can call it as a branch of biology that uses computational and mathematical models to study biological processes such as gene regulatory networks and metabolic pathways. So now the difference if we try to make out from these two definitions itself is uh, it is combining biology computers and statistics and the other one is using computers to learn the biological process right. So in bioinformatics uh, per se you are taking the data from biology putting in computer and then using statistics to analyze in computational biology, you are straight away going from the computer aspect and mathematical models and then you are going to analyze the data. But now let's deep dive and look at what can be the applications of bioinformatics. So the applications of bioinformatics is genomics, proteomics and pharmacogenomics. Now genomics is nothing but a sequencing and analyze, analyzing of genomes to understand genetic variations and their implications in diseases. So that's genomics. Now proteomics will be studying the structure, functions and integrations or inter interactions of protein using computational mod methods. And the pharmacogenomics aspect will be identifying genetic factors that influence a patient's response to drug help and helping in personalized medicine. Now these are the more or less the applications of bioinformatics. But now let us understand what is the application of a computational biologist or biology. Now the first one will be gene regulatory framework or gene regulatory network. So what do we do in this? We do the modeling of the interactions between genes to understand how they regulate cellular processes. Then the second application will be metabolic pathways. So we simulate biochemical reactions to study this metabolism of cell and organisms. So um, we are trying to understand how gene is regulating the uh, cellular metabolism. Then we are also analyzing how the all the metabolism is happening and we try to simulate that in a virtual environment. And then the third will be protein folding. So we uh, use computational models to understand the 3D structure of protein and how they dock and all that. So that's where the protein folding mechanism we try to understand under this. Now under in bioinformatics we have various methods which we follow which will be different than the computational biology. So under in bioinformatics we will do sequence alignment. So we will compare the DNA or protein sequences to identify similarities and infer the evolutionary relationship. Now we will also do structural modeling. So under that we will predict the 3D structure of proteins similar to what we do in computational biology but there we do a 3D modeling using mathematical models here it will be different and we will do, do the and uh, we will also learn about the amino acid sequences. Then the third uh, methods we use is data mining. So we extract meaningful patterns and uh, knowledge from biological data sets. And of course under this comes the machine learning where we use algorithms to develop predictive models of biological phenomena. But now if we look at the comparison with computational biology, the number one will be mathematical modeling like I said in the definition itself. So here what we are doing, we are formulating the biological process as a mathematical equation to simulate and predict their behavior. So we are taking the uh, biological process and trying to Pro create a mathematical equation and uh, we say okay uh, if this happens that happens. So we try to create an equation, a mathematical equation to predict the next steps. So that's the mathematical modeling we do. The second is network analysis. So we study the biological systems as a network to analyze their structure, dynamics and functional properties. So basically if we see uh, the entire biological system is not a disconnected system, instead it is a connected system. So it's a kind of a network. So we try to analyze that to understand the structure, dynamics and functional properties 
properties. How things will happen if this happens, that happens. For example, let's say the, the hormonal uh, structure of the body. So uh, if, you, if in case you, know, you see the female um, hormones like uh, estrogen, progesterone, how they will act and how th it will create the, uh, you know, m more secretion of a particular hormone. So understanding all of that and learning that network analysis, that chain analysis we can do. Then comes a statistical inference. So we use statistical methods to make inferences and draw conclusions from biological data. So this is where, these are the methods we follow in computational biology. But we cannot really put all, both of them apart. Like I said, the body is a connected system. The same way all the sciences are, are a connected system. You really cannot remove physics from chemistry. You cannot remove chemistry from biology. You cannot remove biology from bioinformatics. You cannot remove uh, biology from computational biology or computers from computational biology, right? So there has to be overlap. Now, what is that overlap? The overlap is in bioinformatics, we are integrating and analy analyzing bi biological data. And what is happening in computational biology? We are developing applications of computational models. So we are using mathematical models in computational models to predict the next steps. And here we are taking the data from biological side and trying to create the inference. So in both the cases, one is the, we are, uh, bioinformatics is on a biological side is predominant while in computational biology, the computers uh, and mathematics is predominant. So that is where the, uh, the difference would be. And that is where they both complement each other because when you combine both, then only you will learn. So more or less, you will have to learn both, okay? Question to be asked is, what will be the future of this? What will be the future of computational biology? What will be the future of bioinformatics? So I have answered this question in multiple details, in many, uh, much more detail in different videos, but just in one line. See, advanced data analysis is the future. Biological data is in like petabytes of storage uh, today. And uh, to today scientists are working on developing more sophisticated algorithms and computational methods for analyzing complex data sets in biology. The same with integration of multi-omics data sets. So we combine the data from genomics, transcriptomics, proteomics, etc., etc., to gain a more comprehensive view of the biological systems. So this is more or less the difference and similarity and the future scope now, many students, I'm, I'm sure, will ask me, okay, uh, so after my bachelor's in bioinformatics, can I go for MSc in computational biology? Or after my computational biology, can I do a PhD in this? See, how I see it is computational biology would, would be a more advanced format. You can always do it. Are more or less the same. But at the end of the day, where your career grows is when you learn how to use it for commercial development. You, if you are just an academic guy who will do a PhD and just sit back, relax as a professor, then you are not going into the industry and doing challenging jobs. And I'm not saying the professors are not doing, they're doing a challenging job of teaching the students. But what you studied, in, uh, applying that in a commercial uh, establishment is totally different than doing uh, research in academia. So both are important, but at the same time, you have to understand if you really want to take up that challenging job, then do bioinformatics, then computational biology and go for that, okay? And there are jobs in US, uh, Europe and various parts of the world where you can get placed. And uh, there's a huge demand of uh, bioinformatic bioinformaticians who know computational biology as well. So there's no harm in doing it. But uh, now the, where, where can you do these courses? Well, bioinformatics and computational biology, we do train at Biotechnica. You can check our, our, all the details at stores.biotechnica.org. Thank you so much for watching this video. Any questions, put them down. See you soon in the next one. Till then, keep shining. Bye-bye.